We have a General Motors V6 3.1 liter. And we're gonna go through the steps in replacing the water pump. Before starting your repair, you always wanna be sure you're working with a cool engine. Before performing a cooling system repair, it's recommended to flush the cooling system prior to installing any new parts. With the cooling system thoroughly flushed, disconnect the negative battery cable before beginning the repair. Loosen the pulley bolts before removing the drive belt. Remove the drive belt and fully remove the pulley. Remove the belt shield. Remove the five pump mounting bolts and remove the pump. As you remove the water pump, keep in mind there may be some residual coolant in the system. Be sure and capture this. It's very important to thoroughly clean the gasket surface, making sure that any old gasket is removed. Be very cautious not to damage the mounting surface. If using a silicone-based type sealant, only lightly apply it to the gasket surface areas, paying particular attention to the bulk hole area. Using excessive sealant can cause coolant system failures. When installing the gasket and the pump, it will only align one way. There are indicators on the pump and the gasket that when installing into the vehicle will align at the 12 o'clock position. Install the five pump mounting bolts, making sure to tighten them in a crisscross pattern. It's not necessary, but it's also a good idea to apply a small amount of anti-seize to the thread area. You will torque these to 89 inch pounds. Install the belt shield. Any debris that is caught between the pulley and the flange of the water pump can cause an imbalanced pulley. This will lead to a premature water pump failure. Install the pulley onto the flange. Install the four pulley bolts, torquing them to 18 foot-pounds. This is easier accomplished after we install the belt. Install the bolts as tight as possible by hand. Always inspect the drive belt, making sure it's not cracked or damaged in any way. Reinstall the belt and torque the pulley bolts. You'll need to check the tensioner to make sure it's within the specified area. Before we fill the system, make sure that the air vents are open. Refill the system using a 50% blend of distilled water and coolant. It's a good idea to test your pressure cap. A faulty pressure cap can lead to an inefficient cooling system. If you do not have access to a pressure tester, these are available at your local parts store. With the coolant system filled, reattach the negative battery cable Close the air vents and start the vehicle. Make sure to monitor the engine temperature and look for any leak. To help in purging the air out of the system, be sure and turn the heater on. Once the vehicle's been run and allowed to reach operating temperature, then completely cooled down, check your recovery tank to make sure it's filled to the appropriate level. 